Hello and welcome to the Filler Mat Show. Here we are with you, bright and early, not really, bright and blurry, on Tuesday, Very blurry. the 2nd uh, of April 2024. Uh, trust you all had a nice weekend. We certainly did. My voice is still recovering <coughs> from it. So, uh, but no, it's fantastic. So obviously it all started on Thursday, then we went through on to Friday and then Saturday and Sunday as well. And I must admit, yesterday, well, I was traveling, I was down in Cornwall and doing various bits and pieces. And um, thank you to Laura, who fed me very, very well. Very nice. <laughs> Easter dinner. <laughs> so, can't beat uh, it, can you? Yes, can't beat it. Very, very nice indeed. But a big thank you to everybody who joined us. Obviously, all thank you to everyone who supported us. Thank you to obviously all the new subscribers. A few new subscribers came through off the back of it. It's really nice. And thank you for everybody who bought from us as well. So, um, got yourself some bargains, didn't you, from PM Store? Some very nice bargains. Well, well, doing a bit of a sale, yes. Thirty percent so, off. Yes, thirty percent so. off Airfix and Tammy. We did. So if you did mm -hmm. uh, purchase anything, thank you mm -hmm. very much. And very everything nice. else that sold, I mean, we were in a date of order. We've been doing them today and obviously tomorrow and probably next day it might roll into. So just bear with mm. us, but uh, we'll get on top of it by the end of the week. So yeah, really, really good, really, uh, really good response. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, from my side, apologies for the sound. I know it's doing the it's the foghorn thing. It's my 3D printers running because you guys have bought loads of the 3D printed stuff. So it's running. In fact, it's been running pretty much well all day Sunday afternoon. It was going and then all day yes, uh, yesterday it was running on. And then obviously it's been going all day this morning. So uh, getting those out for you. And to be honest with you, on my side, everything is going, has either gone out for the UK, barring a couple of people with the 3D stuff, because that's what it's doing now. That'll go out tomorrow. And then obviously some of the bigger stuff, big boxes, they get picked up from us. Uh, and I missed the deadline for it, to be honest. So they'll get picked up tomorrow, uh, lunchtime-ish, and then they'll be out to you as well. So hopefully by the end of the week, it'll all be uh, back to normal uh, and running forward. So yeah, but a big thank you to everybody. It was a good, good weekend. And Matt, well, really, you were the first person to finish anything. And yeah. pretty much not many people finished a build. I didn't. I failed. Uh, but you did all <laughs> right with your one. Got it done. Yeah, no, I got it finished. I'm even uh, stuck it to the base now. Hold on, let me just have a change oh, sorry, the camera. Wrong one. There we go. <clears throat> change camera. There we go. There we go, look. There he is. He's not floating anymore. I ain't got a floaty tank. I've actually no. welded it down, so it's that is going nowhere. Look, but <laughs> just fell off because I yeah. didn't it down. But yeah, so there we go. The old matchbox priest, very nice. Really enjoyed it. Hmm. Really did enjoy it. And yes, I did start it early, but can you blame me now because I've actually finished it? Well, yeah, you're one of the few that actually finished, so yes, that, so, that's yeah. good. And a bit of a custom base as well, just chucked together. Um, just one of them palette cleansers, really nice build, to be honest. Mm. Mm. You know, it's a 50-year-old kit, but, uh, you know, with a bit of creative building and weathering, you can you can disguise it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, pleased with it. Very too, nice. Good job. Thing. And I like the base as well. Nice, simple base to it. Yeah, it okay. I, you know, yeah I didn't want to you know, overthink it and complicate it. So I've just done it so it's just looking it's like it's on a firing, mm -hmm. you know, platform, whatever, overlooking something. So, yeah, I hope it gives that impression. But, uh, but yeah, no. Thoroughly enjoyed really even nice. the figures, look. Even the matchbox figures. I know we saw them when we did the, the actual proper uh, images from it, and they really turned out all right. Considering again, I think if you said to most people about figures that are sort of you know say 30, 40 years old, do you know what uh, matchbox if, figures are, yeah. are? Are all right. Do you know, when I did the Wesp a few years ago, when we did um, one of these, I did the Wesp and I painted the figures on that. Mm. And again, they're um, they're all right. You know, to say like like you've just said, how how actually old the figures are and how the sculpts and stuff. I don't know, a bit of careful clean up and paint job. They can they're passable, I think. Yes. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Mm. All good. Very good. Excellent. Uh well as to me, as you know, I somewhat yeah. failed miserably. Um so to be honest with you, what I did was uh on the in the afternoon. They're not glued in yet. They're still pinned. Hold on, take that one out before I break it. Uh, so what I actually did was, in my burnt out frustration, I attacked this with a sanding sponge 
and uh, literally just went to town on it. So uh, sanded it all back, right the way back to primer, got rid of all the metal finish, uh, and then I did it all properly. So we came back, we polished the actual plastic up, we completely detacked it, got the old uh, tacky cloth out, got it all over it, and then we went with a nice new coat of primer right the way over it. We let that completely dry off for a good few hours. Whoops. And then we came back in then with uh, a nice coat of X1 Tamiya Black, took my time gave it a nice coat of that that had then over 24 hours to dry and then this morning i came in and as you can see that's why it's really nice and shiny now because i haven't just rushed it uh that we actually we came in with some uh, the actual aluminium color right the way over it so unfortunately the panel lines have sh hold on, let's get a bit closer have suffered a bit because it's under so many different layers now uh, of stuff but to be honest it's not too bad I think we, we will be okay with this it'll be all right but uh, anyway I've just redone the blue just before we came on air and we've redone the black on the front as well for the actual front canopy which will come in here so we are pretty much back to where we were before so what I'm going to do is I will go around and I'll do the masking up of some of the panels on here change a few of the different colors onto it just really like we did on this one which is the epics one we did before and then i might pop around and rescribe it afterwards in post format uh to give us some of those panel lines back so i don't think a wash is going to stick in there uh and then obviously we'll decal it and go through the motions and get it back on its gear so i'll do this as a little bit of a live build over the next uh few weeks or something else like that just to pop it along but uh very very nice and again it's it's not the kit's fault Yes, the kit had its limitations and we spoke about it because there's no real wing tabs. So we, we made a spa for it, which I showed you. We've made, we've pinned, drilled and pinned. So we've actually got proper decent locating points and things like that on the tail and a few little things to it just to make this work. But generally, as you say, the kit, it's limited run kit, but it comes with everything. As I said before, if you weren't watching, it's got a full uh, photo etch, color photo etch interior. We've got resin ejector seats for it. We've got obviously nice bits and pieces going over it and some nice colorful decals. So I think once we get it all back together again and move in, we'll be okay. So, uh, but again, I rushed it and completely made a hash of it. So That's it's it. one you of those things. It's a difficult kit for a weekend build, I think. Well, I must admit, I didn't realize it was going to be quite as difficult. I was <laughs> thinking more it's going to be match um, matchbox as well as airfix. Uh, I just whack it together and off we go. But I think what it was, because I went through primer, made a hash of some of the black work, redid the black work, too many coats of paint, none mm. of them were dry. So everything was still trying to breathe and move. So that's why we had the big tape marks in it and all these other things going on. So uh, again, it's one of those things we often say about the hobby, and I say it all the time, patience. If you rush it, you'll ruin it. Rushing is ruining. Take your time, take a step back, let things properly dry, let your filler dry, let your primers dry, your paintwork dry. As soon as you start to rush it, it's going to start to bite back. It will fight you. And that's what happened to me because it completely fought me all the way. And funny enough, doing it separately, it was like a dream. Everything just worked so well with it. And it's like, should have just taken my time with it, spread it out a little bit more, and we would have been okay. So it would be I think it's one of the things they use in the extreme metal because, I mean, you picked a metal finish as well, which is not the mm. easiest thing to be chucking out in a weekend, is it? But the extreme metals need time to dry, don't they? They're just not yeah, a quick... Yeah, they need to cure. They seem yeah. dry on the surface when you touch them, mm. but they're not. They need a good day or two to properly cure before they're tough and you can yeah. you can play with them and like say you were you're up against it because you wanted to get it done, but it's it mm. bit you really, hasn't it? <laughs> it did, totally, yes, yes. So, but, there you go. Again, it's going to be all right. It's going to come back. I'm not going to give up on it. It won't become a, a bit of a shelf queen or anything. So then I will get it done and sorted because I want it to be pride of place with this little lump as well that we did a long time ago. But uh, it'd be quite nice for them both together, single seat and a two seat. And again, mm. it's one of those kits I've wanted to do. Been half been after this kit for so long and it hasn't disappointed. Just you need to put a little bit of time into it and doing it as a speed build, you don't have time. So no yes. no no like i say it's a bit more complex than that ain't it a sword kit like i say they are limited run so mm. it needs it needs a bit of time to to actually get them together doesn't it so fair enough but yeah. I think you, to be honest you did really well to get where you how far you did in the time scale we're on yeah yeah i must you know, admit I, yeah. it was what I, I was really annoyed for myself that i'd rushed it and made the mistakes with it but again you are sort of pushing your luck uh, a little bit trying to get it done that quick yeah uh, but anyway some of you else did some fantastic jobs that are across the line already just to say i will get them all sorted for, for the friday show uh but this was uh robert and he's done the little um utility car uh, the austin tilly the little tilly yeah. uh there we go very nice 
cracking little kits them. Really good little it kits. Whichever Very scale. Nice. Is, that, is that the 48th one, isn't it, he's done? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah, you could tell. And then, um, yeah, yeah. It's but the 35th cool. one, they're brilliant little kits then. Hmm. So, yes, very nice on that one. If we just grab another, oh, F18 Hornet. Did it get finished? This is the thing here. The little one. There we go. And say, so I built this kit as a weekend build before, and it is a great little kit. And again, it's fully recessed details on this. It's absolutely mega. Uh, as you can see, going through, we've got a little bit of uh, sort of uh, pre shading going down into there. Yeah. Mopping it up. I did the F. This is the E, the single seat, but I did the uh, the little one. I think that was for a uh, for turkey shoot one, yeah? Could have been, I don't uh, know. You were really pleasantly surprised at what it was, weren't I you? I was really, really... Oh, it's not quite done there. But yeah, I was really surprised by it because mine came out absolutely mega and it was like 144 kit and me, they do not get along. I'm just no. too ham-fisted and all the rest of it. But uh, it did. It, it was all right, actually. So, yes, it was all and right. And Ravel. Ravel, yes, it was a Ravel <laughs> kit. I yeah. know, surprising all round. Uh, nice one did get done, though. He We've did. got Richard. We saw this one. Fokker, Very nice it? indeed. Little Fokker. Little Fokker. Yes, is it, it is. Fokker 8, isn't it? Is it? Yes. But yeah, come out really well, that. Really nice. Very nice as well. Um, the uh, the little buffalo. buffalo. Yeah. There, there you we go. go. An absolute classic from Tamiya. It is. That's proper, an old proper kit now, isn't it? Kit. Yeah. Do you know what? I have a confession. Mm -hmm. I've had that in my stash more times than I care to remember and I keep selling it and I've never built one. That's it. You're going to get one. You've got to build it. Oh, yeah, that's John, it. John bought mm. one to build. Mm. Obviously, with him working and his commitments, he, he didn't want to start another kit and then not be able to finish it. So at yeah. some point, John's got one to build as well, a buffalo. Mm -hmm. It's an African aeroplane. And I can remember, was it um, Matchbox did a buffalo, didn't they? Uh, yes, yes, they did, yeah. Um, I never know if Airfix did one as well, I think. If I, mm. I'm not 100%. Yeah, I think Airfix did one. Well, I remember the Matchbox one anyway, and the boxing and everything. And it, oh, it's a funny-looking aircraft. That it is, is. yeah. very it bizarre, is. but it just don't look very agile at all, does it? No, no, it looks a bit but, chunky. Yeah, chunky and stubby <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah um and the way that the gear works as well yeah, yeah it's it is a funny thing but because that's all glass at the bottom isn't it yeah yeah like you can see if you look down see through, through your feet you know, yeah yeah <laughs> but different definitely different and good hmm. job yeah you'll have to build one now phil just for i will have to do one at some point just but just uh, never done one never done one but yes good work on that one very nicely done indeed uh the sorry we'll go back to the achilles in a minute i've just clicked on the aggressor don't know if it got finished so i don't know if some of these actually got finished well they got till thursday everyone did a bit like yeah everyone did a bit like us they were like yeah no that's it now i'm going now yeah so uh but yes but uh we will obviously showcase sorry where are we there we go we will showcase all of those up on friday as well i'll go through them for the final reveal show as well so uh, make sure you get them all finished by then not that i'll probably get mine done by then but i might give it a go <laughs> see, uh, see how far we can get with it i'll take some more shots now it's not levitating yeah yeah now it is on the ground yeah now it is actually <laughs> on the ground yes i will uh, retake some photos for you hmm to, but one yeah. of the things we were talking about was scale, wasn't it? Saying yes. pleasantries of doing the smaller scales. I've got my bug back for doing the smaller stuff, actually. That Not hmm. just for that, but in the aircraft as well. My aircraft bug's coming back slightly. But, hmm. but more with vintage kits than the new stuff, funnily enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, I mean, 70 seconds is always my go-to. It's always has been since I was a kid, I think. And, you know, hmm. I flip then. I've done some 48 and perhaps some of the bigger stuff. But... I think I always hop back to 70 second. Um, mm -hmm. I just think it's ingrained. So, yeah, I've just been, to be honest with you, I've been doing a few paint mules, as we want to call it, because I want to do a bit of video work on different paints that we sell. Yes. Basically. So, mm -hmm. this is literally the Zvezda Snap Kit Stuka. Mm. And what a pleasant little kit that was. Really Very well nice. designed. Really, really mm. well designed. But I think it, well, it's a nice little. Little kit just to showcase doing a bit of Luftwaffe, you know, blue and early war sort of paint schemes. And, um, mm. and like I say, it's simple to build. But again, don't take up a lot of space. No. And don't take up a lot of time either. But actually, I'll just let me just flip the other camera. 
What I was surprised to say is a snap fit kit. I don't know if you'll see this, mm. it's actually got quite a decent copy detail. It has, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, it's not bad at all for, you know, for what it's for what it is really. Mm. Uh, fit were good, you know, a bit of clean up and stuff, but it's mainly clipped together. Yeah. So yeah, really nice kit. But yeah, that's a bit of a paint me all. And then, what's the thing? oh, this is it. I've got on the go as well in the background is uh, is that thing. What's that? Do you know what it is? No. Can you guess what it is? I shouldn't say that, should you? <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, it's it not is. It's not this that. kit. I'll show you what it is, but it's not actually this kit. Because this is a, another <laughs> one. It's it's Italy's version of one of them. Oh right, okay. So obviously, you know, it's um, about the same era. I think they're all seventies and stuff. Yeah. But built one ages ago, and it's one of them. I just like it in the desert scheme, in the desert camo. So I think I'll do it in that. Yes, mm. it's the one two six. I've rescribed it, and I wanted to do a bit of. It's what I want to tackle this year. Is a bit of more scratch building. I think you know, just mm. enhancing things. Um, I've done a yes. little bit in the cockpit, but I really need to have some lessons if that makes sense. Because something I've never ever been comfortable or really confident in doing, and I, I want to learn it. So mm. any tutorials and stuff. But um, but yeah, actually, still fit wise. Really nice. You know, old Italy kits. I know it's raised, but. They still go together really well. Mm. I think, again, going back to perhaps Hella as well, between these and Hella, you used to get a cockpit where the others like Matchbox and Airfix, you didn't, and Frog. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, some of the older stuff, you got a bit more in it. So, and obviously, this is a bit of a greenhouse, in it? Apart from it's got the wing on top of it. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, that's just something I've been playing with in the background, just for scribing practice, if I'm honest. Actually, while you're on, I need um get your... Dino tape, dino tape out stuff. Right. And your thing, and your tape. And and a, and a scribing mule. A, a, a scribing what? <laughs> no, oh, hold on, that's the other stuff. Hold on. <laughs> right, scribe your stuff, hold on. Uh, where are we? Two, that's it. Uh, what was it? So, dino tape and stuff. Is the stuff that I like is this one um, purely because uh, this is uh, the display stuff. Yeah. I'll find the end, we'll be all right. There we go. Because what I like about it is you can see it's got lines, which oh. doesn't sound good or doesn't sound important, but actually it makes lining up stuff so easy if you've got little lines on it. So just when you're putting it down, if it was clear, it's very difficult to see it as well. Yes. It's got little lines. Just go on, keep talking. And it, it comes in like every single thickness you could ever want or imagine. It's but quite thin this stuff. But as you see, this one is in sort of fives. And so you can actually line stuff up for riveting and stuff like that as well. Ooh. So if you are going to be coming along and you're going to be using it for you know for various things, like especially if you used to be doing it on this, as you can see, it will work an absolute treat. If I wanted to guide this a little bit over, you can see you can pop it down here, you can see the tape edge, you can see where it's running to. Uh, all the way through um, and again they do different sizes of this I don't know what I've done with them all now but uh, I'm sure I had them here somewhere I've put them somewhere really safe so safe I can't remember what I put them now but they do it literally in every single width and that I think that's one centimeter and that's probably I don't know uh, two mil uh, mm. right the way through so but they do literally all the sizes of it which is quite something so you can go through with those ones and they're thick enough that you're not going to jump it's not like it's thin it's thin enough to conform and bend and all the rest of it but also you do get multiple chances with it and go through you know so you can do it that way but I've done various ones on it we spoke about it before because I've got them here but I have tape with lines on as well for scaling and riveting and all mm. stuff like that which I, I go through and you can use those in conjunction with the tape as well it was the, uh, it was the little through. hack that you use with like just normal tape to you know to get the most out of dyno tape because it oh just... when you're being really cheap so yes, yeah what you basically, do yes yeah all right hold on let me get a bit of this let me cut yeah. a chunk off because so i've got this, if you... you remember this scribing tape this clear yeah stuff? Carving that's what i've tape, been they using called it. it's all good to line up because it's clear yeah. Uh, but it does work because it does stick. It's got quite good adhesive, and you can use mm -hmm. it multiple times. But I've yeah. got some Dymo tape as well. Is it? Is it Dymo? Dymo? Whatever. Whatever it is. Dymo. Anyway, Dymo stuff. tape. But that yeah, is like a one-hit scribe. It's lost its tack, hasn't it? So yeah. And I can never so, remember your hack for. This, this is the yes, stuff. That stuff. 
So what happens is if you want to keep replacing it and replacing it and all the rest of it, the tack loses its little oh. bit of bite. All right. So what you can do is you can take your your bit of tape like this. All right. You stick it side down onto your mat. Right? That sticky side down, yes. So that sticky side down. Then you take your tape. Yeah. The glasses on. All <laughs> right. Then you can slightly overlap it so it's obviously just the tape yeah. hanging off right then you can just keep going with this all the time so you haven't lost your little bit of edge and you can come along then and if you wanted to you could pop it down just like that and then you just go and go and go and then when obviously when the this stuff which if you're using diamond tape and get really expensive when it starts to lose its tack after sort of four or five pushes and all the rest of it then what you can do you can just get another bit of tape which is in theory you want to thin a bit like this and uh, whatever I've done with it, I had a thingy literally here a minute ago uh, with thinner tape. That's all the made of the back. There we go. This is what you should be doing. So then you just literally come along, stick that one down. This one's losing its tack. You come along, place it over the top, and then hopefully it will lift off the one underneath together and get it off now. Come on, little git, come together. So there we go. So you've got the tape under it again now, and you can come along, place it down fix it, scribe it, move it, fix it, scribe it, move it. And if you wanted to, you could do it the other way and put a few on there first and then peel them off like a rip off. Oh, all right, I'm with you. Take it off and then go again. And now it's still sticky, you know, and you can just work your way around with it. But that way you've always maintained this bit of tape is absolutely fine. Yes. Because you, it will be all good so then so you can just the put it onto it because this is the bit you need the tank the tape is cheap you know it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. you could use anything that's sticky because you want the edge this is what this is prescribing up against is the edge so obviously you can't use tape but you just butt it over and just give it a small gap over it and just keep going going again so but again that's what it was it was a cheap way because this stuff can get expensive so it was a quick way of literally coming on with this stuff yeah. And then obviously the trouble with this one is as well the sticky it only lasts it's very very briefly. Rubbish, isn't it? It's one. Yeah. It's literally one go and it's gone. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. So consequently, yeah. that's what it really came in for. When you've got giant rolls like this, it's not so bad because you've got plenty of it. But when you've only got an infinite amount, you can do it as well. And I used to do the thing as well. I've cut this in half. Yes. So you've still got a nice flat edge. So you just cut it in half and then do them onto the tape, and away you go, and away you go. So, yeah. There you go. Good, Good hack. little hack. Good hack if you want to save some pennies. So. It is as well, or if you just want to rescribe a kit, you know. Hmm. Uh, yeah. But I was just fine, yeah. you know. I, I, I always sort of struggle, you know, when you're going around the tops and the bottoms. But mm -hmm. with that technique and the um, either a razor saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or if you've got the UMM scribers with the blade. And yes. then it just starts it, and then you can get mm -hmm. a scriber in and deepen it or do whatever. But actually, the, I, I quite go to using them as a scriber, to be honest. I think yeah. they're quite nice yeah. to do the job, especially a fine one anyway. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I say, something like we've always thinking with the older kit, sometimes they get dismissed. But for a practice piece, it can be quite mm. cheap. And actually, you can get quite a bit of satisfaction out of doing them, to be honest, because you yeah. Yeah. Kind of brought them up today. It's nothing new. It's not reinventing the wheel. People have been doing it for decades. But mm. again, it's a skill that's possibly being lost because obviously the new kits that are coming out. Obviously, you know, this has been superseded by better kits. You know, it's not yeah. like the only one on the market, and so by um, some of some of the others. But again, it's perhaps a bit of a like a hop back to childhood. <laughs> if you mm. want to, you know, kits kits from back in the day. I think you get that thing where people often say that life's too short to build crap kits. I think that was a meme somewhere once. Um, yeah. But again, probably, it's one of those ones that you do, you think that. You think at the time, yeah, well, I'm not going to waste my time messing around with a 40-year-old kit yeah. and all yeah, the rest yeah. of it. But honestly, I think you get to a point in life where <laughs> actually I don't think it's a bad thing. Because to say, you've got that real sense of, you know, beating the kit. And I've built some real junky kits over the years and they still give me the best satisfaction about you know sometimes you build really nice kit it goes together well don't get me wrong i've built some absolutely beautiful kits that have fallen together you know and they're normally from the tammy is this world and the triple a companies and they're just generally very nice kits do you remember them 
But this is it. Do you remember building? Because they go together so well, you're like, I don't really remember it going together now. But all the ones where it was somewhat of a battle, like this one I'll remember. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, all the other ones I've done that have been like, you know, people have said, oh, why would you build that? There's a newer version and all the rest of it. So, yeah, well, you know, I'd like to give it a go. But again, it's that thing of sharpening your skill set. Because sometimes you don't need to do much rescribing, filling, dry fitting, because a lot of kits don't really need it now, you know? Mm. And again, I think you these are perishable skills, I always say, especially rescribing and re-ribbing. If you haven't done it for a while and you come along like a kit that needs a full rescribe, re rivet it takes you a while to get back into it, get back in the flow of doing it again and stuff like that, to do it well anyway, um, you know? And that's what I quite like. But also we were talking about scales and like our favorite scales. And for me, it's, what I call cutting mat. If it fits on an A2 cutting mat, I'm happy. If it's bigger than that, it becomes a problem. Two main reasons. One is is that for filming purposes, I've only got, you know, luckily my camera's a long way up there and I just zoom it to whatever we want and I can pull it right back across. But then you've got me legs in it and you've got me guts in it and all the rest of it and it doesn't look very pretty. So what I tend to do is try and keep it so it's on a cutting mat and I don't want to do this thing of keep showing it fighting to find the camera. So I do like doing it. So again, we all, you know, we had loads of feedback on this saying, why didn't you do it studio scale? And it was one of those ones. It needed to fit on here so it can fit in the camera shot you know the camera's in just a little bit because obviously on but you know the whole point is here look that's why so it can fit in my overhead camera in one and that was the whole reason that i scaled it to this yes we could have done it bigger yes we could do a studio scale one and all the rest of it but for ease of use and for filming and stuff like that this is the nice scale you know and so for me Personally, I think cutting mat size is pretty much everything. It doesn't matter if it's smaller, but I don't want to go any bigger. Because then uh, things like spray booth, spraying in a spray booth oh, become very, very difficult. You can't film um, it, though. It gets too... No, you can't film it and do anything with it. ...to, to manoeuvre it about. I mean, you've had mm. it with some of the bigger stuff you've done, and it's just awkward to film. And it, yeah. like I say, we're doing it a bit myself now. We're filming. I, I, I completely get it. I mm. get, you know, and that's why I'm thinking the 70 second stuff, as in aircraft for me, is actually easier to film because I've not quite got an overhead like you have. I mean, well, I've got one camera yeah. from here and I've got the one at work where I can pull the tripod up and have it sort of over my yeah. head. But it's easy to film. You can see a bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lack of, a bit more lacking in detail that you perhaps, again, I think that's changing a little bit because of technology. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again, you know, yeah. Um, but but it's a little bit limited to what you can do with 70 second. But again, you can still show enough. Because mm. I think majority of, let's just say, when we do shows and mainly models over here, if they're doing aircraft, it's it, majority 70 second and, and 48 vintage. Let's be perfect. Yeah, yeah. 30 yeah. second, we've said, is a bit niche. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. niche because of the subject, because you can the subject matter is now brilliant. It's just the size of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, when, you, when you're doing like what John's doing with that A20, that is a... A mm. beautiful kit, absolutely amazing kit, mm. but it's a lump. And I think yes. he's finding yeah. it because he don't normally do stuff that big. And it's a lump. And I say, if you were going to do one and film it, I think you'd be, mm. you know, he would like, well, I have to show a bit of the cockpit and I'd yeah. have to miss a bit, show an engine. Show, mm -hmm. You like show the detail bits more than actually the overall yeah. build. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, just overall. really break yeah. it down. So, um, yeah, again, I don't know. Like, seven, like I say, seven second for me has always been... Mm. Definitely for aircraft, my go-to. I'm more comfortable in that scale working in it, to be honest. And I think that's what it is. It's what you're comfortable working yeah, on. With and do, yeah. You know, I think it's that thing as well, like we said, is that when you're working on 72nd scale, you don't have to go into masses of details because one, it's very hard to see it. So, for instance, down in here, you've got, you know, this lightning cockpit. Has it got one? It wouldn't matter because, to be honest, with this down, you can't see it anyway. It has. It's got one all in here somewhere if I open this up. But we did do it. But honestly, look at that. Can you see anything in there? <laughs> when, it's, no. when it's all black in there because it's a yeah. you know, post-war REF jet and it's yeah. very, very sort of tight cockpit, isn't it? So you see yes. a bit of an ejection seat. I think that was always right. the upgrade on the older kits, ejection seats, because they were always crap, weren't they? Let's be honest. They were yeah. weak. Yeah. Which again now, again, we're all back to 3D printing. Most of the ejection seats you can find to print off. So you could print mm. Yeah, you however many one. you want. Uh, where yeah. before, you know, you'd have to buy an aftermarket one and all stuff like that. So, mm. but yeah, ejection seats are always the the weak point, weren't they, of a mm. of a seventy second definitely, cockpit? Definitely. So. And again, things like you know, we we often talk about the big areas, obviously cockpits, wheel wells, you know. And again, wheel wells. All right, there's not a lot in a lightning wheel well anyway, but mm. you know, 
at this scale you don't really need to go overboard with it because there's not a lot to great deal to see in there anyway so uh, what I like about 70 second scale and although I don't do much of them I have that appreciation of that you're still working on something very small that you want to make look really really nice uh, mm. and go through with it and you've got to try and get it into scale effect and all of these different things that we do with these you know but you don't have to mess around in certain areas so if you're not into doing cockpits and wheel wells and all engines and all stuff like that with 70 second scale you're not expected to almost no one's expecting it to have a fully detailed engine in 70 second scale no one's expecting it to have a fully detailed cockpit or anything else like that and I think that's one of the beauties with doing these kits, especially if you're into, you know, painting and weathering and stuff like that. You can get on with it a lot quicker because let's face it, these go together normally uh, very, very quickly because you're not messing around with all those extra details of cockpits and various bits and pieces to go through. And I think that's really why, you know, 72nd is still beloved and cherished by so many modelers, but, you know. But do you, but do you think now, you know, with the technology, I mean, we've seen some some kits, that, let's take all my hobbies for one, mm -hmm. um, the IBG 190s that they've done, AFIX with what they're yeah. doing in 72nd. The detail in them now is on par with a lot oh, of yeah. You know, yes, we're not definitely. talking 40, 50 year old sort of 70 second kits. We're no. very basic, you, mm -hmm. you know, curbside model, as we call yeah, them yeah. in the car yeah. world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, the detail you get now is, you know, full interior. Let's be honest with you, some of the Airfix kits like the Shackleton mm. and the B B-17s and whatever, the the uh, the Wellington, you've got a full interior pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're never going to see it once it's bought no. it up. It's no. beautiful, it's there, but often you're not going to see. But at least you've got the option that, you know, because we've said like the scales have gone like 70 second now, probably 48 for 48 mm -hmm. is 30 second and yeah. so on and so forth. But even probably 144th now is up to 70 second scale mm -hmm. with detail because of our good caddies and computer yeah. design. It's not somebody with a pen, you know, proper, no, that's proper it. doing mm -hmm. it. But um, again, I, I still could think like some of the subject matters from back in the day are never going to get retooled. Mm. I don't know if you've re seen it actually though. Can you remember the. Um, the guy that passed away from S and M models. Yes, yeah. Is apparently I think it's his. I'm, I'm, you know, make a comment if it's not. But is he was doing a wasp and a scout. That was it. Yes. Well, they're coming out from LF models. Mm. I think they're doing it. Right. It's nice. Come on, I think unfortunately we don't get full trade, mm -hmm. unfortunately on them. But yeah, new seven second scout and wasp. Mm. Look really nice as well. Actually, really nice detail. So probably worth a look as a review and stuff when they come in. Mm. Yeah, fragile yeah. looking but yeah yes um, yeah. you know be interesting because i think the, the only scout is the old airfix one isn't it mm, really yeah, old airfix one yeah but um uh, yeah be interesting to see that um mm. But, uh, but, yeah, no, but scales, you know, I know I'm going to get all the people just to say that, say, oh, well, I only built 24th scale and all the rest of it, and I've built 24th scale, and it's all lovely. But again, yeah. it's subject matter on what it actually is. Yeah. You know, like I said before, is that working on um, certain scales, I like to be in, uh, on certain items, I like to be in certain scales. Like if I'm doing a World War One plane, I will never go smaller than 30 second. Because, nah. yeah, I just, it's like I'm rigging like, and details, and it. yeah, yes. it's 70 yeah, yeah. second scale, forget it. Yes, I've done it. I've done a 70 second scale Newport or whatever it was, yeah. did the once. But again, that was a quick little fun build. I put no real effort, if you like, into it. And it turned out really, really nicely. But yeah, it scares the hell out of me. 48 scale, you know, biplanes with rigging, like, Rrr. you know, so I like it in those ones. And again, 48 scale, um, you know, Second World War aircraft, like we did the Tempest and the various things like that. Very, very nice. No problem at all. But again, I don't mind doing that in 30 seconds. I think it looks quite nice. And obviously I've done it in 24th scale as well back in the day with the Airfix one. So they are done, but still they're all roughly around about this size, if you look around. Yeah, and again, yeah, with yeah, the bombers, fine, you know, like 48 scale Lancaster, 48 scale B-17 we've got up there and stuff. And it is that thing where you're like, yeah, okay, you know it, they are just on the cusp of being too big they are manageable on the bench but really they are a little bit too big i think it'd be nice to do in 30 um 70 second scale really yeah um but 48 scale that's no problem but if you went up to 30 second to me that's way too big because then you're into the realms of my bloody b52 and that thing's just all like this <laughs> so you, you're it's trying to model with it and it's got wings on it and you're trying to turn it over to show and yeah, it, it yeah. just doesn't work you know i mean but, if you're if you're not building to film 
and you're mm. like, you know, you've got somewhere to store them, and it, it's mm. fantastic. You can do it. That the options mm. are there to do. I mean, there's a 48 B52 out there, isn't there, from H yeah, yeah. BH models? If you wanted to yeah. go down that road, and that's that's like huge. Mm. Um, but the options are there. But like when I mean, just talk from our point of view. I think when you're filming, it, you, you you need it to fit, like you say, fit a cutting yeah. mat. You get in your camera, yeah. really. You know, yeah, and it's. So. Um, but yeah, no, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Like I say, even doing that little 176 scale priest, like I say, I normally 135 for armor, which again mm. never takes up a lot of room, really, no, as in no. what, you know, like World War II tanks and vehicles and stuff. But that was just a nice change. It was just a nice something different for me. Again, mm. a bit of hot back to the childhood of having the Matchbox Ranger 76 scale armor kits with the little bases yeah. and stuff. And yeah, just see what I could do with it. Now my skills have improved, mm. hopefully. After years. <laughs> yeah, yeah no but uh yeah i think you know think, at the end of the day scaling is personal choice if you're into yeah. your 72nd your 48th your 32nd your 24th your 16th scale again it's just personal choice there's yeah. no right or wrong to any of it you know it's just yeah. that sometimes i think it's nice to challenge yourself in a different scale up and down you know and for me i don't do much 72nd scale because again some of it's camera work i want to show you details i want to show you engines i want to show you all these things you don't get much of a chance on 72nd scale you know so again like 35th scale and helicopters and armor i think is the sweet spot that's a nice scale to work in you know but as i said we have done bigger stuff you know and it, it sometimes it just looks amazing and fantastic and you love it and then other times you'll see somebody who's done it in 72nd and in 48 they still look amazing you know I, yeah i built years and years ago i did a starfighter and i did a 72nd a 48th a 32nd and a 118th so and i i happened to have them all with me it's during the commission days and uh it was one of those things and like the 118th one that's one of those toy type ones i can't remember who it was though. that company did the 118th big 21st century models 21st century models so it's completely stripped redone rescribed redetailed and we built it that but i had them on my old table a house i used to live at this huge table and it had them all there running down and they're all in similar schemes as well not exactly the same but it's quite cool to them all and it's funny because your eyes always drawn to the big one but the reality is in a photo you're drawn to the big one the reality is when you look at it you can see that thing about you know that's such a little lovely little kit and then you're going up in the scales you know yeah, to yeah. it and it's funny because the 32nd one never did anything for me i think 48 scale is still the sweet spot of that particular aircraft with the starfighter because it's long and it's just a tube of little wings yeah, yeah. so really nice in that size but over the 32nd one even and they say the 18th 118th scale was just massive so you know it was just over that's, the top i'd say i think that's when it gets it can be a bit toy like in it lucky with detail i know like i'll be boss do a mm. lot of 118 scale kits don't they and like you've said yeah. they're very basic i mean they are fundamentally there aren't they as, as yeah what they yeah are. you've got everything There's you need no detail to them whatsoever so it's no. again you've got to add all your own stuff which you get mm. when you get into bigger scales i think you need to you know, mm, they do yeah. need that. Well, like that 118th bit. scale, the whole point of it, it was completely taken apart. And then I actually did the cockpit, and it was all plastic card in those days. You know, it would have yeah. been around about 2000, 1999, 2000, 2001 time. And uh, yeah, it was all plastic card and then primed and done, and lots of cables, real fabric in that scale for the seats. And, you know, yeah. it, it sort of yeah, worked yeah. and it looked lovely and all the rest of it. But again, had to go around because all the panel line was really soft and horrible. So the yeah. entire thing got rubbed right back and then rescribed, re-riveted, and re-riveted in that scale is really difficult. So, yeah, so. I can imagine actually, yeah. Because <laughs> that, yeah, that yeah. wasn't a wheel, you had to do the old thing of a saw blade as I did it, and then dink, 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 you know, doing Individual. it by hand. Yeah, and it was a horrible, yeah. horrible time. There's weeks of work on that, but yeah, it was one of those ones where done one, wouldn't do another. <laughs> no, well, you ticked it off the bucket list. So mm. your your scratch building then, mm. where did you learn it from? How did you to learn honest, to scratch build? Books in I those am, days. I'm asking for a reason. Yeah. You know, when it comes to it, I am absolutely clueless, to be perfectly mm. honest with you. I cannot see the wood for the trees. It, mm. it's, it's a really weird thing. It's just, you know, some people, because like, they just pull shapes, don't they? Well, it's just copy yeah. a shape off that and then copy a shape off that. But then, uh, like... Daft thing, but how do you actually break it down just to make a start? It's never mind doing it. I can get that bit. It's like, well, where do you actually start? Because I'll, I'll just look at some plans and just take bits off that. 
when you look at a, 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 an interior of an aeroplane, hmm. it's quite a lot in there to pull yeah, yeah. stuff out of it. Do you know what I mean? So I was going to start off really simple and just do a bit of, you know, um, ribbon work, shall we say. Yeah, yeah. Something simple. Start with that. Start with the simples mm-hmm. and then... And then hopefully progress do you know what i mean and try and look at some tutorials and the way i learn is obviously watching mm. people on tutorials and stuff but there's not a lot out there for scratch building if i'm honest not it's, for scratch building these days it's, it's a really, lost art form i think very niche i remember doing like instrument panels back in the day so you might use um obviously the kit part as a template you know mm. draw around it and then you know literally doing that thing of like punching out on plastic card for dials for bezels yeah yeah and you know and then having to do them all by hand and you place them and you glue them in and then obviously you might have a decal that will drop in for the dial and then cable in coming out the back so you end up with an instrument panel with little levers and stuff coming off of it and it's all in plastic card and it looks awful until you spray it and when you put a coat of primer on it suddenly pops and comes alive a bit and yeah. then you can literally go on and go right the way through but a lot of it for me is that i tend to i'm not you know and again if most people who know me know this i'm not a rivet counter so if I'm making an interior, say, of an aircraft, for instance, and doing a lot of scratch building into it, if it's a box, I'll laminate plastic art to be that right size, sand it, do it all, goes on, perhaps a little handle onto it, little bits of pieces, mm. then it will go into it. Wirelesses and radio, same thing. I don't make a box. I just laminate, or I'll get old resin blocks, cut in you know, blocks yeah, off of yeah. resin, oh, cut yeah, them yeah. and size them to shape and then put plastic bits onto it to make it work so and greebling. and all of these things. Greebling it, yeah, Greeb- that's it. It's that's really, it. really time confusing and like everything with modelling, you're probably never going to see 90% of all the work you do. No. And nobody will know it because by the time it gets a coat of primer, it's like photo etch, I always say. When you see yeah. the photos of Eddard and it's like, oh, this is our latest model, and it's covered in photo etch and you can see it all. And you think, wow, look at that. That looks lovely. One's well, got a coat of primer on it. What photo etch? You wouldn't know if it had so, it on there or not. <laughs> so, never use paper and stuff. You know when you're building formers, you know, like a bulkhead or something? Yeah, yeah. And you've got one of them. I've got one here. You know the, uh, I think, I think what they call, where you've got the metal. You push it in and it gives you a shape. I think it's for pipes yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or, or yeah, tiles yeah, or what you mean. Yes. Or, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So did you use one of them and then paper template it and then flip, yeah. you know what I mean? So you can get it equal both sides. Yeah. 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 And then normally, as I say, I'm not one of these for accuracy on that because what I'll do is I'll just get it roughly to the right, for say bulkheads and formers and things like that, get them to the right mm-hmm. rougher. And then I'll just sand, test, sand, test, sand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got yeah. it. You know, and that's how I build. I'm not one of these to go try and get it accurate and then it fits in. I'm more of a guy, roughly, that'll do. No, bit off there, yeah, bit that, off there, because I work faster I'm, I'm like good. that, yeah, than I do with trying to make it accurate like, the first time. I'll roughly get it, yeah, that's ish, and then we'll go for it after that. So, but yes, yeah, it's definitely a dying art, isn't it? I mean, there's still hmm. some of the some of the guys on large scale planes. Um, when you flip on there, I mean, they do some just unreal work with, you know, yeah. I know that the guy said before he's done that big sunroof, does the big vac form kits, and he does yeah big vac kits, and there's just a you know, a shell, shall we say? Yeah, You've got to shell. fill it, yeah. and yeah. it just it it blows my mind of how it, it's all worked mm. out and done. You know what I mean? And it always looks brilliant. I don't know. Yeah, I know it's time no. consuming. Don't get wrong. I think that's the problem I have. I'm so got a attention span of nothing mm. and lose interest yeah. quick. You know, that's why yes. I like some second as well because I can lose interest really quick on subjects if it's not mm. sort of floating my boat, shall we say? Or flip and change um and i think then you know how they got that concentration and commitment to do that is mm. yeah, that's a skill in itself to me yeah no of course it is yeah definitely you know what I, I mean? think it's one of those ones yeah. where i think as time goes on we still go about 3d printing and stuff like that it's gonna yeah, die yeah. out it really will become one of those lost arts well, but you know many times though sometimes like i've done it with various projects you go back through mind where i thought well we could just add a little bit more detail so you might have like an engine cowling and normally there's nothing on the inside so you can actually put the formers and the runners into it and it just adds a little bit more depth and we've put sometimes some fabric on the inside as well and the things that they have i know we did it for that fw190 the big one and it's really just little touches 
makes quite, actually quite a big difference. You've got the engines open and you can look at it, the inside of the yes. cowling. Instead of it just being smooth, you've now got yeah. riveting onto it and you've actually got the formers and the runners into it as well. And it really makes things pop and come alive, you know? Whereas you mm. say, most people, you know, it's like, won't worry about it. You can't really see it. But you say, if you're looking, if you're taking the time to look in an engine, you're probably going to look at the inside of the covers as well. Yeah, um, yeah, you yeah. know, and again, we've seen it recently. Obviously, when we did the Tempest, the aftermarket um, 3D printed parts. Oh, it's all on the inside. It's it's more detail on the inside than there is on the outside, because it's just riveted yeah. on the outside. On the inside, that's the interesting bit, because not only now you've got formers, but you've got all the riveting and fasteners all on the inside. Uh, and again, it's like that's another level of detail. And trying to do it in the smaller scales. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, but it was not so bad on the big stuff, stuff you know, but like, yeah um like tool clamps saying that in, even in 35th when you've got x tool clamps that they are i, I can't put my eyes out it's just not great anyway and they are now mm. impossible for me to put together well, now you can 3d print some tool clamps you know what i mean mm -hmm. and they yeah, work perfectly yeah. well you've just got to chop your tools up to fit rather than actually mm -hmm. work but they look they look good anyway but again mm -hmm. like with, with aircraft and stuff the little bits of detail like say can just can just change your model a little bit even if it's not a mm. full yeah a full scratch build if you know what i mean just like mm. you've just said there if you open an engine cowl or, or or a new instrument panel anything do you know what i mean all i'm thinking i'm trying to think head mate to be honest to do with this hampton that we're going to tackle yeah. and obviously you've got the halifax there's mm. stuff in there but there's stuff it needs mm. and that's where Definitely. i want to just brush up some basic skills of scratch building just to enhance that kit a little bit more mm. than what it's going to be you know it, both I think one of the biggest school. ones with internals, especially with bombers and stuff like that, that you can enhance them, and it's mm. not too much of a problem, and that's doing runners and formers on the inside. Because if, yes. like our kits, both of them have got none at all. So to add mm. a little bit of depth and a little bit of feeling, but there's something more holding it all together instead of just plastic, you know, if you put yes. some little runners down and some formers and things like that, and if you rivet them in as well, but run a rivet wheel over them, so when you put a wash, you've got a nice and then dry brush and all of those things and it gives a nice yeah, little yeah. bit of detail and again simple little things like you know when you look at your references um you know you might see cabling uh and various things funny, i'm going to do a lot of it on the apache is wiring and the hoses it may be you know on the apache on the roof there's none of it in the kit at all but as showed on the video you look up there's cables running down the sides all like cable tied together and hoses for the environmental for the demisting and the various things none of that in any kit that i know of but we're going to put it into ours because when you are sat in it it's very noticeable you know and yeah. i think if you've got the doors open and looking in it'll just give another level of detail right the way through um and again i think yeah doing hoses and cables and various bits and pieces even things coming those. out of instrument panels didn't it? yeah like absolutely the backs of, of the instrument, instrument panels, panels and hanging down Remember? and looms running through and yeah, yeah there's lots of it inside aircraft especially world war ii because they're all exposed normally you know yeah, they're not yeah, inducting well. anywhere it's just bolted to the side running down so you know it's that old yeah. thing getting wires and lots of little wires twisting them together to make looms and then little yes. bits of tape around them to bunch them yeah. as well and and go through you know you just make That's... up a, like i do i make up a foot long of it and then you can chop it up into lengths and then paint it to the colors you want and then use them so again that's not overly time consuming is it to be honest no. it's not no. like hours and hours of just building some it's just a little quick well mm. quickish enhancement so um, yeah. But while we're on, yeah, if people make a comment of what preferred scales they like in yes. the 74, yeah. 38, 35th, 32nd, mm. whatever, just leave mm -hmm. us a comment and say, you know, I like this scale because. Because, you know, it's always yeah. good to feed back into it, you know. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's an interesting thing. I mean, you could we, we, we could talk scale, you know, scales for days, really, can't you? Of, yes. Of why you're doing what you do, but... Uh, but yeah, no, it's a, it's always an interesting thing to talk about, definitely. Mm, definitely. Good job. Uh, last up, we've um, heard on the grapevine that the ICM Marauder, allegedly. Well, I've got a date. Whether that <laughs> should date be the end of the week. So next week, I think that, yeah, we should have I'm, our grubby mitts on them. Bank holiday, I reckon, back end of this yeah. week, beginning of next, they should be next in week. at the suppliers and then we should get them in. So that's going to be yeah. really good. 
Everybody's so eating to see this kit, aren't they? Yeah, well, I'll grab one as well, and we'll get a review of that done as well. So you'll be reviewing and building it, probably. <laughs> well, no, because I've literally just finished doing the B twenty five. So yeah, well, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. have a break from them for the minute whilst I work yeah. on this other stuff. But uh, yes, no Apache next, and back to the Y wing as well. Back end of this week, so that's my plan mm. for me. Yeah. So yes, good. Right. Okay, then, guys, we will leave it right there. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, apologies, this is late, but we're actually recording this, and it's now past four, and I've got to edit it. It is. So <laughs> it'll be up around about six ish. Yes, six or seven. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yes, but say if you've ordered from us, go for PM and me. Just give it a couple of days as well, because don't forget it's Easter holiday, um, and obviously post won't get picked up till tomorrow. Some of it's gone out already from me, but as I say, just give it a couple of days to filter through. Uh, but hopefully by the end of the week, it should be with you as we make our way through. So good job. Yep. Uh, I'll be back with you for members tomorrow night uh, as well for a catch-up vlog. Uh, and then we'll all be back together on Thursday where we can see how we're getting on with our builds. We can talk about, obviously, the Easter one as well. So we're doing a special post-show on Thursday night. Yeah, so get, get your builds done, members. So we've got get your builds, show. members, done. Get them shoved out and done and all the rest of it so we can talk about them yeah. and have a look around there as well. And then, obviously, you said this week, I'm going to be working on the Apache, and then hopefully Thursday or Friday, Ooh. I might get a little base coat, I'm, things like that, onto the Y-Wing as well. I'm starting my Apache. I bought it back to actually get through and get it sorted. Um, the other thing as well, from the PM side of it, I've got a review going up tomorrow, so Phil will have it for mm -hmm. the floor members, and it'll be on the PM YouTube channel, and it's actually a cracking little kit, an older kit, but a cracking little kit of the uh, JU-52 from Hella. Very and good. worth, yeah, definitely worth hmm. viewing, because it surprised me, actually, how good a kit it is, yeah, even after it. these years. So. Yeah, really I like kit. those reviews where you review a kit and you open up the box not expecting anything and it blows you away. They're my favourite reviews. Yeah, I have you know? heard it was better than the one I built the Tulare one. I heard it is the best in scale, but I've never seen one mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. I've never owned one, do you know what I mean, for the older kits. So when actually, this is obviously new Hella, but older moulds. And yeah, yeah. I, it was really quite surprising how good a kit and, the, and how well the moulds have held, held up. Since Very 1979, nice. I think it was first tooled. But again, you've had it yep. with the uh, C1. Which one did you do? The old yellow oh, peril? Yeah, the CL214, was it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, yours was uh, a later thing. 215, CL215. The moulds are brilliant. Absolutely sharp. Crisp as hell. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, whatever Heller did back in the day, mm. their mould, titanium, I don't know, they're indestructible because, again, they're yeah. chucking them out 50 years, so years later, and they're still as good as they was back then. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, play teller. Yeah, good stuff. Very good. Okie dokie. Well, remember, you can watch that tomorrow. I'll get that up on the site for you as well. And as I say, yeah. I'll put the links up as well so everyone else can see it. So, yeah, good job. Brilliant. Right. Okay. okay, then. We will leave it right there. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, everybody. We will see you again very soon. Say goodbye, Matt. We're out of here. Bye. Bye.